comment that I want to bring up just for fun. And then I've got two questions that will close our show because I think that you're going to love them. And um, they're kind of yes, a little bit uh, offside. The comment was Danny Tesh versus Espy left handed. Rest in peace, Espy. Thoughts? <laughs> From who? I don't know. I didn't even copy their name. Well, I mean, <laughs> I love stupid, bold statements because stupid, bold statements, even ridiculous, can create um, can create conversation. And, and if they really are that ridiculous and stupid, then you just don't pay attention to them. But it's never a bad thing. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible that he gives you a match. I, I, he'd be like a 10 to 1 dog. Um, but fuck, uh, you know... Uh, it's not. We've seen Stranger Things. Do I think he can? He can. He can beat you. I, I don't think he can beat you at all. To 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 assume he can beat one of the top left super heavyweight arms on the planet, I think is ridiculous. But maybe people know something we don't know. Maybe the guy knows something we don't know, or maybe he's just making a complete bias and bold statement, and that's fine too. Um, I'd like to know if the match happened. Would that guy be willing to bet on on Tesh? And he'd say, Yeah, maybe twenty bucks. I'd say, Go fuck yourself. Like, there you go. There you have it. Right. Yeah. Um, saying something is one thing. Actually, believing it with your own with your own wallet is a different thing. Um, but uh, uh, it's yeah. Uh, what are you going to anyway? Do? I want to call. Like, we're talking about left arm matches, and somebody mentioned the um, WAL maybe putting on exhibition or something with left. There's a few good matches out there. I'm still waiting for Devin to like uh, respond to my challenge to him, any promoter. I'll pull Devin Lefty and Wagner Bortolotto. I've been wanting that match for a while. And I think that's a guy that really needs to be given a shot somewhere. Mm. He's an exciting guy, and I think that um, there's a lot of interest in left-handed matches out there. Yeah. I, I would also start bringing up, I think it's not a bad thing for a wall to bring up uh, um, South Americans. Um, I mean, there's a huge, huge arm wrestling population down there that they could probably get a boatload of views and support with if they brought in someone like like uh, um, Wagner. Yeah, and if you need a left-handed guy to go against him. Or uh, there's a guy out there, uh, there's a guy that's a light slash middleweight, um, TLA, um, wicked hook puller, destroyed uh, Dal Antonia in uh, Mike Gold's, he came up in 2009 or 10 or something like I that. I recall right? that. Yeah, he, he's just a um, destroyed um, Corey Miller. Um, and he's a powerful, compact, um, excitable, um, dramatic puller, and he has a huge following. Um, I think, I think they're, they're, you know, him versus Hale. I think he beats Hale, but I mean, it's not a terrible matchup. Um, him versus Tony could be. That's one guy that can that maybe has the horsepower to beat Tony uh, and, and put the match to the arm. But uh, I don't know why they would not try to bring him up. That that is all pros right across the board if you bring him up like uh, compared to cons there's no downside with that from what i see yeah right on well mike mike wants to know <laughs> what are gobby's thoughts on drelek having a higher left-handed ranking than him on the in the well, rankings <laughs> well i saw that briefly and what, what that is is chance shaw not knowing or not giving a fuck about lightweight arm wrestling to the point where he sees um drelek beat uh, i forget the guy's name uh, anyway, so the guy he beat won um, the um, Michigan State last year, lefty, and 154. I won it even easier in the 176. Um, well, I wouldn't say easier. And uh, Joseph beats him, and I think in a, in a, I think they had a super match or round robin. I don't know what they had at Michigan State. They had a 154 type deal, and he beat him. So then he jumps. He jumps me. He jumps Chris Michaels. He jumps a whole bunch of people. That Drellick. Drellick is really a, a two level arm wrestler. Uh, you know. Um, he needs his, he needs full hand control. He has no arm, no side pressure, no bicep, um, and so uh, his list of of, of, of victories are, versus uh, strong strong pullers is nil, or um, you know uh, pro pullers. Um, so uh, I, I think that's Chance Shaw just saying, well, I don't really know anything, but I know that he beat this guy, so I'll jump him to four. Now I did this with rankings for many for the last couple of years when I was doing the rankings, I would do the same thing. I would just see. Uh, if Ryan's number two in North America and Joe Smith beats Ryan, well, he's going to go to two and Ryan's going to go three and bump everyone down, even though everyone from three to 17 are going to be like, what the fuck? This guy can't do anything with me. I know that, but it's just a very simplistic um, way to do the rankings. Um, it's a weak way to do it, 
um, if I if I continue doing the rankings, I would have changed the format. And maybe Chance is changing the format, but I don't think yet he's 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 looked at that into the one in the one fifty four class. Because um, and I and, and Joe said something on our YouTube channel in the comments, and uh, I said I'd put two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, meet you halfway between here and and Minnesota for a tournament, and uh, mock the fuck out of you. And uh, of course, he never responded. Um, Cause that's it. You want to know what someone actually thinks, ask them to put up money and usually they run away or they pony up kind of like uh, what I did with Todd Hutchins. What do I owe you? 20 bucks or four? It's 20. We had one bet. It can be 40 if you want. What's it? What's the next one? It's, what's the 20, one? it's 20 right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's, yeah, that's, that's on Drellick. I mean, uh, um, so I think it's just a, a reflection on chance Shaw, not either not knowing or not giving a fuck, not paying attention. Usually, the bigger guys um, don't really pay attention to lightweight arm wrestling. Um, you know, um, it was easier for me as a rankings guy, as a lightweight, to pay attention to the heavy, 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 uh, super heavyweights because in all sports, I like to see big and strong. Football, MMA, I like to see. Um, there's more trauma that can happen with, with with big guys. More, there's more potential for disaster. More potential for combined horsepower. Um, I rather see a horse pull than a dog race. I just like seeing brute, big, you know, brute force. Um, so it's easy for me to pay attention to the heavyweights as well as the lightweights. But when you have a, a 220, 30, 40 pound guy doing the light, doing, doing the rankings, uh, he, uh, he's not really paying attention to the light guys. And uh, it's understandable. I don't think I would either that much. So rankings, I think that's are, what, rankings are tough to do when you get, uh, unless you get the guys together to actually pull. Yeah. And, I remember how frustrated I used to get when I think it was Slater that was running the rankings and every Ontario heavy, super heavy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, um, a, guy, a guy doing the rankings cannot be a nice guy or try to be a nice guy. Um, Eric was the opposite. Eric did it. He, he was so scared to look like a good guy to his friends that he would sometimes be biased the other way. Um, just so he didn't look like he was biased because he was worried about looking biased. So that kind of hurt his, the people close to him. Um, but he was really good. He was very, very objective, nevertheless. Um, but yeah, it's it's tough. But you, you almost just like refing, you have to know you have a job to do. You have to look. You have to look at it purely objectively and not give a flying fuck. Now, when people have criticism, you have to address it. You have to look at it and and briefly see if they have if they have merit, and you have to you have to investigate um, or look further into it. But other than that, you have to have the ability to say, I don't give a fuck what you think. I think you're dead wrong. Um, just a ref, refing's like rankings. You got to know what you're doing, and be completely open and 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 encourage and embrace criticism, and be able to shrug it off awfully quick. So the last question we have, and it's coming from Jill, is Devin bad for the sport of arm wrestling? Absolutely not. Um, that of course he's not bad for the sport. He promotes it. Um, he's one of he's 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 the, he's the sports leading view getter. Um, he's an ambassador. My issue is not with Devin um, and, and his, his um, you know, what he's done over, over his career. My issue was the danger he decided to win at all costs. And so his, his decision to, to do a full Kings just to keep relevant and to win a super match um, had negative ramifications on the sport. Um, but him as a man, no. Of course not. He does too. He, he does too many good things, and he's too. He, 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 he's an ambassador to the sport. I just didn't like that one. I just don't like wh where he's gone and where he's headed with the Kings move. Other than that, he's, he's fantastic for the sport. Yeah, I don't. I didn't really. Um, I, that's the that's the answer I would have expected you to give. Yeah. Um, they asked the question, so I asked the question. I don't yeah. think anyone could argue that Devin is bad no. for the sport. I think it's a it's a ridiculous argument. I mean, in some in some. In some people's eyes, he is the sport, right? In some people's eyes, he is everything. He's a sport. He's their, he's their number one fan. He's he's the epitome of arm wrestling. Um, you know, uh, I don't think know. he is the. I don't think he is bigger than the sport of arm wrestling. But Devin, no, right now, Devin is the most popular arm wrestler in the world, and he has absolutely the views and the followers and everything he's touching in WAL. Whether you like it or hate it, it's turning to gold. He's. Yeah. Um, bringing more eyes to the sport than anyone has ever, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't, well, it's also, it, he's also in an era. I mean, John Brzezink didn't have, he didn't live in the YouTube era. Right. So it's not, it's unfair for the, uh, that is true. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, uh, it's like comparing the revenue from, 
uh, gone with the wind to the movies of today. Like you right. can't, you can't do it. It's uh, I, not that John's that old, but we're saying that yeah, you're right. The yeah. medium was there for him to get up there. But uh, but I can tell you if you can take um, um, Johnny Walker and Cobra's personality, their 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 charisma, um, their star factor from the '80s and '90s, and remove them from that era and put them right in today in their prime, you would see you would see the same thing. You would see. Um, a massive following because they have that personality much like Devin does. Devin's just the right personality at the perfect time in, in, in our, in our universe. Um, well, just, I can you know, tell you that I can tell you that there's guys out there that if they put their mind to it, I mean, the show with Travis is, was huge for us and Travis has the char the charisma. If he yeah. were to toe the line for the company, I mean, he could be that guy. Um, but Devin has, in the time he's um, yeah. in the right place at the right time with the right people and yeah, yeah. Tra tra Travis is more articulate he's more charismatic um, he's the most um, yeah he's the best talker uh, in the sport the thing with Travis is he you know goes to the beat of his own drum he does what he wants when he wants and I even though I disagree and I with some of the things he says and I just think um, that's awesome like uh, Devin's a company man. Devin is now a company man and everything that matters is money and wins and losses. And that's his prerogative. He can do anything he wants. Um, um, you know, um, I, I tend to have a little bit more respect to the guy that just does what the fuck he wants and, and, and goes by, by his own rules and his own um, code of, of conduct and ethics. But, um, but isn't he doing that? What's that? Isn't he doing that though? Going by his own code of conduct and ethics. It's just different than ours. Well, it isn't. It's not. It's. It's. It, you can say that, but it's one hundred percent geared to only winning and making money. Now, anytime your 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 code of conduct or your 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 value system is geared towards an end result with money payout, um, yes, you're entitled to it. But it also means you you don't have much depth to your soul anymore. Um, if that's what you're fighting for, if that's the number one thing on your priority list is filling your bank account. And, and getting results and getting positive uh, or getting uh, viewers and upping your YouTube channel. If that's your sole goal, which is your prerogative and Devin shouldn't ha have to answer to anyone, uh, at least of all me. But if that's what you're doing, you don't have much of a fucking soul. Uh, what kind of human? Yes, you're an incredible arm wrestler and ambassador. But my question is, what kind of man are you? Um, like I've tried to said about John Brzezink, great, greatest athlete on earth. Michael Jordan, greatest, greatest basketball player. Doesn't ma necessarily mean they're great men, great fathers. Um, there's, 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 it's not, it's not synonymous. Um, I used to think Devin was a great arm wrestler and a great man. He's still a great arm wrestler um, with a different skill. I just don't see a great man anymore. Um, but in today's day, you, you cannot say things like that without, without a backlash because it's, it's an absolute verbal attack. You know? Well, I mean, there is that. I mean, there, I don't know if you remove arm wrestling from the equation, he might be the same guy you looked up to before. Um, n n no, I, I see a change. I, I, see, I see a change in his personality. Um, him prior to retiring from the military and him post any, anyone who goes and, he, and, and fights and, um, pulls a trigger and kills people when they come back, they are never, ever, ever, ever the same, um, different ways. Some have vices, some go to alcoholism, some go to therapy. They all have demons. Um, Devin seem his demon seems to be clinging to being uh, the number one arm wrestler in the world, uh, because that seems like what is um, that's what that's how he values himself right now. Um, there's something missing in there, um, you know. Um, but for me, there's he, he has he, there's there's something. Even when I, I watch him uh, in an interview, I don't see a enlightened man. I don't see a, a completely content, happy man. And I know when someone comes at me with threats based on an opinion, I damn well know they're not a completely happy. Uh, man in, in complete spiritual harmony. I know that. So there's something wrong with him. Um, you know, uh, I just don't see the same man uh, in the last uh, two, three years that I did in 2010, 11. Um, and, it, and his style or his, his arm wrestling culture reflect that. I mean, he used to say the high hook is arm wrestling. In a high hook, you can argue hand control, hooking power, side pressure. It is the ultimate move. He, he preached that for virtually 15, 20 years. Now he goes into it by, by lack of options. He goes into a king move. And I watched a video a couple of weeks ago where he claims 
the future or the ultimate move is the king's move. Like, it's not, no longer the high hook. And he's saying that because that's completely self-serving. That's where he's going. But if you really give a shit about the sport and, and new people coming into the sport and growing, you still got to say, listen, I'm king's moving. But that's not, that's not what you, you should be doing. I remember people coming to practice saying, I want to pull like you open and hold guys off. I said, you don't want, I won't teach you that. You don't want to do that. You want to become a, a levered puller so you can increase your career and win efficiently. Um, you have to be able to see what you need to do, but also look at other people and, 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 and have a, a clear cut idea on what, what their trajectory mm -hmm. should be. The fact that he's, he's all on King's move uh, and abandoning the high hook as, as a way of teaching the world, man, now, now you're going into almost unethical type, type grounds, I think, uh, or not, not unethical, but potentially dangerous and irresponsible. Um, that's a ridiculous comment. And I can see as he's saying that, that that's a man festering with bias and self-serving um, objectives. Uh, and, and it's now seeped into his subconscious, whether he realizes it or not. Um, anyway. I got Corey West messaging me over here, telling me some stuff about uh, after pulling. We'll talk about it on the next show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I believe you're going on, on Michael Todd's show Sunday. Is that it? Yes, Todd that's what I got yeah. coming up. Yeah. Uh, I got Michael Todd's show recording on Sunday. And uh, I'm going to be their special guest. And in a week cool. from now, we got the Mike Barrett Classic. I don't know any more details about that. Yeah, I saw it's that. It's in Winnipeg. It's, uh, they've got access for first place. It's uh, less than an hour from my house. So I'll probably go and I'll pull one arm just to get one of those things. And um, my guys will all be there and uh, I'll show up and we'll do it up. Sounds good, dude. Yeah, I look what forward to you got? watching. You got a tournament tonight. Yeah, another Vermont night tournament, which I love the I love night tournaments. If they're giving away hoodies, they might have an overall. It's just a good way for me to have fun and test myself. Um and, and you know, Vermont has such a um a hotbed for, for uh, arm wrestling and especially uh beginners and stuff like that. They have like always have a hundred entries for kids in all these fair tournaments. It's it's just awesome to watch even if I don't pull, but I'll be pulling tonight. And then I take a break and, and I get back to training for three weeks and I'm thinking of hitting James Reed's um, New York State wall deal uh, in Syracuse September 1st um, That's because that's only maybe a four-hour drive for me. And I told him he, he was in Addison County with, with Michelle a couple of weeks ago and I met them for the first time. And I said, yeah, I try to support you. They, they do a lot of good things. James does a lot of good things in New York. So I said, I'll try to, uh, try to support it. I mean, anything within five hours, if the awards are good and, and all that stuff, I, I should try to support it. Um, so I'll try to get back in training and, and, and see what I can't do at uh, under 160 at that event. That's it. All right, man. Let's uh, talk a little bit about what we're going to do on the show here coming up in the next month or so. We're going to sure. We're going to try to do uh, some guest spots. We've got yep. Paul in confirmed to come on at some point. We've got Michael Todd confirmed to come on at some point. And um, you had a request from somebody about going to a live show, like a YouTube. That a couple people they just thought and, and I, I kind of agree i mean i'm I, I whatever you want to do i'm good with but i remember when when podcasts used to happen the ones that were live i used to love because i love funneling in uh questions as they go uh, it feels more interactive you're like you're involved in the conversation so I, I don't know in terms of total views and how it would benefit us but i i, I as a if i was a viewer i much rather enjoyed um whether it's Facebook or YouTube, because you can interact. It's interactive. People tend to, to, to like interacting. They, they feel part of something. Um, they can get reactions on the spot. It, it feels more organic. So um, I've gotten well, a bunch of messages. On, yeah. I don't want to do it every time, but let's do that one coming up. So sure. uh, in the next week, we'll make a decision here. And um, maybe we can do that special episode early in the week, next week too. And see what yeah, we, we could do a midweek one uh, and you, you can, you can, uh, uh, with our backgrounds and you could put it out uh, when you want, but yeah, we can do that midweek. Um, right yeah. 45 minute thing or whatever, 60 minute thing, just to, to, to deal with our deal with that, that question for those who are interested, many might not be, but those who are can, can tune in and, and get to get the answers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember to hit the subscribe button and I think we're out of here. Sounds good, buddy. All right.